What's up, Falcon fans? I want to do a profile video on Logan Woodside. If you guys like this type of content, hit that like button. If you guys hate this type of content, hit that dislike button. It won't hurt your boy's feelings. Well, maybe just a little bit. But also, if you want to do a huge favor for your boy by hitting that subscribe button, it will help out the empire grow tremendously. So on that note, let's just quickly dive into the video to see what our boy has done since he's been entering the league in 2018. I'm pretty sure that most NFL fans have probably never heard of this guy or can't quite remember uh, which draft he came out of because he wasn't very highly scouted when the NFL draft was coming around in 2018 where the Cincinnati Bengals drafted him in the 7th round with the 249th pick overall. But the unfortunately thing for Logan Woodside's rookie season was that he never got a chance to make it onto a 53-man roster with the Cincinnati Bengals and with the Tennessee Titans because unfortunately, even though he did sign his rookie contract on May 11th, 2018, he was waived on September the 1st, 2018, and then on September the 3rd, the Tennessee Titans decided to pick him up on the practice squad, but then he got released on September the 25th, 2018, where that's where he didn't get his rookie shot as an NFL quarterback potential, so he was out of the NFL and decided to go play for the Alliance of American Football, the AAF League, where he got to play for the San Antonio Commanders in 2019, and then he came back in the NFL to play for the Tennessee Titans as a backup quarterback for them this time for two years and a half until they released him around August uh, the 30th and while the Falcons signed him back on December the 12th, 2022 as a practice squad member and then I think eventually we activate him a couple games left of during the season. So on that note, let's dive into the video to really see what he accomplished back in 2020 and 2021 as a backup for the Tennessee Titans. Honestly, this is not a shocking revolution that a lot of people might have thought that uh, Logan Woodside would have been like a crazy backup or a bridge quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. Obviously, that is not the case here because, you know, he was playing in front of Ryan Tannehill, who was having a career year. When it came down to scoring touchdowns in 2020 with 33 passing touchdowns and 7 rushing touchdowns to boot on the ground, that really solidified what Ryan Tannehill can do as a quarterback. Even still, he was drafted way back in 2012 with the Miami Dolphins through 2018. He was a solid good quarterback, but he wasn't the most talked about quarterback at that time until he went with Tennessee where a lot of non-Miami and Tennessee Titan fans kind of understood who he was as a quarterback and we thought, okay, he was pretty good. That pretty much solidified on what Logan Woodside job was going to be at Tennessee because there was no reason for him to even get a starting role because the Tennessee Titans were winning a lot of games. They were scoring a lot of points and they were going to the playoffs consistently enough where his name was not even called at once, only in certain ending series where he only just had to kneel or run the ball to run the clock out because at the same point like I stated earlier he was playing for a really fantastic team where they weren't struggling to find a quarterback and so unlike other teams that are, are struggling to find a franchise quarterback they just have their backups and their other backups to try to fill the gapping hole until the NFL draft or until the NFL free agency start where they can pick and choose which type of quarterback mentality they want so now let's talk about the Atlanta Falcons situation with Logan Woodside. Quick side note, I was trying to find all of Logan Woodside's preseason games to really dive into seeing what he can really do with his mechanics. Now, obviously, there are a couple of videos on YouTube you can find yourself, you guys. But for me personally, I want to really see what he can do. Now, obviously, we're playing very French vanilla over here with both sides of the party. So let's not get too crazy or critical on Logan Woodside's gameplay because I don't really take it that seriously. I think most Falcon fans don't take it this very seriously if he struggles or not. I'm just curious how he handled himself and poised himself as a quarterback, you know, trying to fit into the 53-man roster at the end of the day. And I thought he was, eh, he was okay. He wasn't bad. He wasn't great either. Um, there were a couple plays I really liked him, you know, going forward to Xavier Malcolm. I thought he did a pretty good job in targeting him. You know, J.J. Agawad side, I thought he did a pretty good job. You know, Carlson Washington Jr., I thought good ch uh, uh, check down guy. And then you have to think about the two wide receivers that were getting the deep balls and Josh Alley and then Matthew Sexton that were targeted three times. Josh only caught one reception for 14 yards and Matthews only caught one reception for five yards but I like that Logan Woodside took a chance and they both almost could have clutched those if they caught the ball in proper form and time that could have given Logan Woodside a lot better stat wise and maybe a potential
or touchdown, but I also like how he moved the chains down the middle with his tight end and Tucker Fisk that he was targeted three times and caught all three receptions for a grand total of 15 yards. I thought he moved the chains well enough. Um, he didn't get too crazy out of the pocket, maybe one or twice, but you have to give it to the Miami Dolphins as well. They made plays, but I will say this, for him to be the third string quarterback at this very moment in time, you know, I thought he handled himself with grace because obviously Desmond Ritter is the starter and then Heineke is the backup. So Logan Woodside doesn't really have a lot of opportunities to showcase what he can do. So obviously there are things he needs to work on on his quarterback mechanic play, but we're not going to dive deep into that because at the end of the day, he's not really going to play a single snap when it comes to the regular season on paper and in theory, if nothing injury happens with our two quarterbacks. But the question is how much playing time will he have more with the preseason against the Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers for us Falcons fans to feel comfortable enough to make it into the 53-man roster and having uh, a third quarterback spot instead of some other spot that we can probably use as well. So it has been confirmed going against the Cincinnati Bengals, Desmond Ritter will get a chance to showcase what he's all about to the Atlanta Falcon fans. So that begs the question, how long will it be for the whole game for one quarter or half or whatever they want to put him in? And then that also leads, what about the Steelers game? Will Logan Woodside even have a chance to even play as well? Because you got to think about Heineke. Will he also get a, a chance to showcase what he's all about? So those are the type of questions we got to look for to the future. So on that note if you guys have lasted this long to the very end of the video thank you guys so much for taking your own personal time and day to watch these videos if you guys want to watch more videos they're here up on the screen so what do falcons do rise up until the next episode show love and peace of the world and peace